That was kind of a sad start to begin season two with Yamada crying so much. I've never seen her so emotional, but this leads up to a good opportunity for us to come over. Snow is coming on strong. Are we gonna stay the night over and meet that? Let's begin today's reaction. I say that when my rice cooker makes the noise. Preparing the rice. <laughs> I do that. Okay, they're gonna come over. I hope the parents show up as soon as Yamada and Ichika somehow trip and get onto the bed. <laughs> Why are you doing it yourself? I got only one arm! You fucking started doing it on your own! That is like... That's gotta be so bougie, right? To have the whole system to warm up the bath water like this? Well, then again, it's just a temperature meter. Right? It's just a voice speaking. As soon as it hit like a certain degree of temperature, then it just automates like this voice clip. But this fancy ass shit. Are they really rich? Because they live in a fucking apartment, probably a three bedroom apartment in a condo. Ichikawa lives in a fucking house. A single floor housing, detached house, bro. Like, I think that Ichikawa is like richer. Low key, if you look at the housing, people who actually own the fucking land and have a house, they're probably more well off than people who own the fucking, you know, it's just like an apartment. <laughs> Bro can't even take a shit because Yamada's gonna be outside just listening the entire time. Oh dear lord. There's that one TikTok. Fuck. Can I find it? Hold on, let me go off on a really random tangent here. TikTok going over to girlfriend's house toilet meme. Wait, is, is there a TikTok here like this? It's basically just shitting fucking noise. No, I can't fucking find it at the moment. But first time you go to a fucking girl's house and you just destroy her fucking toilet. I hope to God that she, she doesn't fucking hear that shit. What? What you looking for? Would he possibly traces of her? You looking for like old hair that fell off? Like like what particles of her body could be left behind here? Mm. Alright. Probably gonna be so oversized for him. Yes. But like, it's the opposite because you're the bottom in this relationship. I'm sorry. What, you want to wear the dad's clothing? It's going to be way too big for you. You're too tiny. We're going, we're going commando. Part of me hopes that the underwear isn't in the bag either. Part of me hopes that Yamada yoinked it and is trying to be sneaky and be like, oh, oh, what? I don't, I don't know where it went. Hey, hey yo, hey yo. It's way too big. Wantaro, I think? What's she wearing? Chicken stock hot pot broth or salty chanko. I don't know what chanko is though, so I'm gonna go with chicken stock. It immediately covers his dick. So cute. <laughs> It's gonna swing. Oh, hey, one time chill. Oh, Jesus. Stay. 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 Oh, yes. Wantaro just kind of clutched. Wantaro just. I don't know if, if she didn't do that. Like, <laughs> it might have taken a long time for something like this to happen. Why are you kidding on all fours, too, bro? 
How revealing it was, I guess. It's cute. It's a onesie's cute. She probably got self-conscious, right? I don't know. I, I don't think this is a... I think her excuse is made up. I think there's something else going on here. But the onesie's very cute. What's she doing? She's pacing. Too excited. I wonder if mom and dad's gonna come over just in time to have like hot pot together. I don't know. I, I really want to meet dad, especially. Okay. Wait, before dinner? <laughs> Wait, hot pot's just a fucking appetizer for you? Also, the chopsticks here, there's like this like shoelace. Do you see this tip? There was like this like string so that you know you don't lose the other pair. That's actually pretty smart. Mm, it's just a solo snack, you know? It's not a good look if you eat hot pot alone, yeah. Oh setting up for a potential hot pot date. Yeah, it's never a good look if you eat hot pot alone at a restaurant. Same with like Korean barbecue. There's some like or like dim sum, right? All these like eating like restaurants where it's supposed to be like a group, but if you come in alone, people kind of like judge you. <laughs> Your book. Your book. Connections. I did! She mentioned this in like the finale or something. Aww. Or in her final form. What do you mean final form? Already in her final form. What do you mean, final form? <laughs> She's just stealing the fucking class curry. It's for everybody. She's just eating it straight out of the fucking pot. I mean, she was urgently looking for Ishikawa the entire time in the yearbook. Right? Because that's how much she cares. She cares. But then he also found her immediately, you know? Piano. Does she? Wantara, what's up? You ballet? Parents put her through everything. Why'd you quit? Really? I thought she might have quit because her parents like forced her to do it. And it was too much, but... Really? I thought that she'd be like naturally gay. Well, she got like the idol kind of stuff, the entertainment stuff. Through her looks, I guess, and her height, the modeling stuff. But even in the TV show, she was not getting recognized compared to the other people. But okay, she was never really that good, so she quit. Aww. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing to like reinforce to your kid. Like, you conditionally train them that, hey, as soon as you quit something, I'm gonna give you a fucking feast. What that does to a kid's mind is like, shit, I'm gonna quit fucking everything then. Thing in the private school. Lucky for us that she didn't get into private school, just like how Ichikawa, you know, got separated from the friends that got into private school. Now we can meet each other. But what? That's how she sees herself. And I think that the burden might be on Ichikawa as well. Maybe she felt useless around because he was injured and sick and stuff. But like, other people probably think that like he's out of their league. Like, you're like this crazy famous person. You're being in a movie. You're doing all this crazy shit. But to her, it's just like, no, I feel like I'm nothing. Where is this coming from? Holy shit! That just got so real all of a sudden. Like, the, all the insecurities are coming out. Hmm. Yes, let's be honest with your feelings. Yourself too, Ichikawa. Yeah, when he was, you know, being mean. The cold shoulder treatment. Come on, confess. No. No, he didn't. Oh, dude, did that trigger something? 
Like that episode and like what she just said about people leaving her. Oh, that's so fucked up. I can't believe we're doing this all over again. Itsuka, pro, come on. What? What? Dude, back to back episodes of her crying? Dude, this is getting way too horrible. But like, this might be a good thing. Cause like now we're at a stage where she feels open enough to like talk to this shit. Right? We're getting way more emotional. Before, like, it was kind of like maybe not surface level interactions, but you know, it wasn't really there yet. Now it's like we've been primed to be in this point of a relationship where she can like cry in front of it and talk and that only deepens the bond <laughs> buddy what are you gonna do about this <laughs> oh <laughs> cue the lights yeah where's the lights coming from hold the fuck up wantaro is looking out i remember wantaro is literally looking out hold up there is no fucking light okay it's night time it's, it's fucking night time <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where the fuck did that light come from there, bro? <laughs> oh! <gasps> Carter. Confess your sins. Oh, wow. It's not as well. It's not my clothing. It's your clothing. <laughs> yeah, slurp that shit up. <laughs> okay, take your finger. Wrap that snot at the end of her nose. Cut it off. Roll it as it comes to you. Lick that shit and be like, no, "That's too gross you for me, bro." I thought you probably would. I thought you definitely would. <laughs> Why is she suddenly worried about things now? Because of Ichika. Because of how close and important he is. And like that reminder that people could just leave. It makes sense. Oh. Oh. Uh, bro, you should have let her finish. That is kind of the process, though. Mm. Wow, the wisdom. <laughs> Perhaps the most unrealistic thing here is Wantaro not begging for food as they're eating hot pot. Any dog, when you're eating dinner, they're gonna be right next to you just begging for the fucking food. Wantaro is unfazed right now, just looking out the window. <laughs> She's coming home! Mom's coming home! Oh shit, mom's coming home, okay. Well, it's fine, we've already met the mom. Well, at least I think we did. Anyways, I want to meet the dad though. <laughs> yeah, it'd be kind of really embarrassing to meet your potential girlfriend's parents while wearing their daughter's fucking PE outfit. Like, that's kind of a bad look, you know? Okay. Oh, she's hiding him. She's hiding him. Yes. She lying! I think a girl is over and not a boy. Okay, okay. I didn't realize that there was only one bath in the house and they all share it. So like, not only would he, he should have realized like, it's not just Yamada traces that he should have been looking for. It, it was fucking her mom's. <laughs> I guess the dad uses it too. I don't know. I thought they had their own separate bathroom or some shit. <laughs> Yamada mama. Yamada mama. You got three plushies. No, oh, it's not gonna be that big a deal. Yeah. Hmm. Mom is kind of pushing. Maybe she realizes that it's all bullshit. It's like, you got a boy over, don't you? Or is she just adoring her daughter? Oh, oh. Okay, she's just adoring her daughter like that. I didn't realize. Like, when outdoors, she was like correcting Yamada. And like saying, sit properly. I thought that she was super cold and strict. But this is a different side I didn't realize. Does she got a onesie? She got something like that? Let's see it. Onesie. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious. 
They're both coming home, bro. He's a bit like you? Really? Really? I mean, the gamer part, but like, aside from the personality wise, it's just like Ichikawa? Hmm. I mean, you know what they say about how like guys or girls. There's this like weird psyche where guys like girls that reminds them of their mom in a sense. Sounds weird. I know it sounds weird, but human psychology, there is something like that. And girls find comfort in dudes that remind them of their dad. It's not saying like, oh, it needs to be my dad, but there is some level of, I don't know, similarity, some level of comfort. Sigmund Freud, exactly. I want to see him. Oh! Mom took off the skirt, but did she, she? I can see everything. I can fucking see everything. <laughs> she... <laughs> oh no, I have an allergy. If it's just a picture, do hello, Yama Mama. <laughs> it worked. Whoa, whoa. What the fuck? I didn't understand that. She sees the milk tea, then she jumps on him. Before that, he said, I'm sorry for making you lie. I don't think that was it. It's the milk tea. Is that the shit from last season? Is that really the shit from this? No way. She kept that shit? She can't. That's from a lot. <laughs> what does she do every night? What does she do every night? Fucking, fucking <laughs> lick the fucking bottle every night? <laughs> <laughs> Carte, the soundtrack, bro. Ba bum. Ba bum. You've never lied to mama before? <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on, go back, go back, go back. A grown-up who refers to herself by name at home. <laughs> All right, it's a secret between us. No dad? Ah, oh, we got away without seeing that. I hope we get to see dad as soon as the elevator door opens. I want to see what he looks like now, because in the ending, I saw him, right? He looks so cool. What does he look like now? A towering man has shown up. Dear Lord! He is tall! He got blood on his shirt? He... This is like idealized Ichikawa if he actually thought that he was like a serial killer like in season one. You know, it's, it's giving like the blood, but what is the blood from though? Maybe it's just like a nosebleed he wiped out on his shirt. What is the boss name playing? Kyojin! Da. Kyojin. What do you have, my fucking daughter? <laughs> you got my, my last name, right? Yamada is his last name, right? It's his surname. It's like, the fuck? I don't remember having a son. Holy shit, he's tall. That's crazy. Like, it's insane. He's like twice of his size. And he's only like six foot. Well, the elevator door opened. Like, he doesn't even fit in the fucking elevator door. But think about this, right? I've been saying the entire time, I hope Ichikawa gets through a growth spurt. I hope he does. Because, like, you know, I think that he is right in puberty and that it potentially could happen. And then maybe Yamada could also, you know, the height match could happen or some shit and he may be more reliable. I'm not sure if she prefers him small, but, like, now that Yamada also said that the dad reminds her of Ichikawa, kind of like you, personality for sure, but now there's even more data or evidence that suggests to me that like, yo, what if a fucking growth spurt actually happens? I hope it fucking happens, but it would need to have like some kind of time skip, right? Because like, unless significant time passes, you can't just grow overnight like that. I wonder how that's going to work. Maybe those are never going to be a growth spurt though. <laughs> Lies. 
No, it's not that big a deal. Sister! Coming of age! One of the few girls in this show where fan service like that is like not weird because she's actually fucking legal. Kunka, Kunka. If this was Adachi, he would put the outfit over some sort of pillow, body pillow with Yamada's face on it. He would. Oh, hello? I'm thinking. Yeah, tears. Vulnerable conversations. Mm. You think a girl would invite a boy over and do all of that shit? Just a normal friend? Come on, man. You know that's not true. Don't lie to yourself. That's fair. That's sad, but that's fair. I, I know he's lying to himself. He knows deep inside, but it's like he does, you know, not have any fucking actual friends, so, you know. <laughs> and we can be friends, my schizo friends. Sick? Sick? Strep throat? Mm. <laughs> it's not competition. Only five. I can't tell what this voice crack is implying. That like he's hitting puberty? It doesn't sound like a typical voice crack, like it, you know, cracking at a high pitch or something. It just sounds like he's got like step throat, but like what's happening with Barboy? <laughs> They're both the same size to me. Bye. Are they trying to tell us that he's hitting puberty? Like it is, right? It's gotta be, it's not he's sick. Yo, is he gonna have the gross part soon then? We don't have to talk at school, but at least make eye contact. Stare at her! The conversation there was kind of interesting when Adachi's saying something of like Yamada has to dance or something. Are they preparing something? Because like in the opening, you see like a dance kind of choreography, right? Oh, that's what they're talking about. <laughs> and, he, and he chose the dance because he thought uh, Yamada would choose the dancing. <laughs> you know that she, you know, needs to do battle and she quit, right? So Adachi, he's trying too hard, bro. Bro's doing too much. So what is this? Dojo? Are we doing judo? Like ground pound wrestling? Yamada and Ichikawa. Is she gonna fucking fucking just I don't know manhandle him? Put him in like a, I don't know. You know we're gonna start wrestling together. Uh, oh. oh, it's actually that bad. <laughs> Oh, did she strategically do this? <laughs> Dude, you didn't even fucking give him a heads up! This is not even a demo! Alright, everyone, pair up! You watching? Take this fucking gun! Whoop! Fuck this kid! <laughs> not even prepared! <laughs> <laughs> For everybody you can pick. <laughs> you did. Okay, a fun story. Actually, it's not a fun story. Creepy story. In my high school, there was a dude named Mr. Maitland. And this motherfucker, like before I was even in high school, I remember in grade seven. Grade seven, end of elementary school, and then we go right into high school. We went on a school tour to my high school. And already the rumors was Mr. Maitland's creepy as fuck. This dude creepy as fuck. He is so creepy. He's the gym teacher. He teaches, you know, he also coaches girls volleyball. The rumors already spread. And then the first day, 
of gym class with Mr. Mayland. Yeah, um, there was like a whole PE uh, introduction and all the boys were giving, you know, the fucking handout and it was like a co-ed class. And Mr. Mayland at the end was like, all right, everyone's done for just, you know, first day, you know, introductions. All the guys leave. All the girls stay. It's like, what the fuck is going on? And then Maitland would be like, and then I talked to some of the girls, what do you guys talk about? And then he talked about like, if the girls, you know, because obviously it's puberty, some of the girls might have periods, you know, stuff like that, issues, if anything arises, you come to me to talk to it. I was like, something about me at that moment was like, hmm, well, I mean, it's a fucking teacher, they're an adult, they're like, a, they're trying to make sure nothing weird happens, so I guess it, it makes sense. But it, it was always kind of weird, and any time that we do some sort of gym activity, right? When we're doing exercises or stretches, he would always pick the hottest girls to like fucking like we would create a circle, then he would pick the hottest girl to go and come in the middle, and then he would take her and like do these stretching together and trying to show us how to stretch. But it was like she would like bend her over and move her legs. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? And after I graduated, rumor was it, Mr. Maitland? Got a whole investigation done by the police due to some sketch shit happening in the girls' volleyball shit, and then he got fired. Like, creepy as fuck. Anyways, that's a. And then <laughs> there was Mr. Maitland, and then the other teacher, <laughs> his name was Mr. Grigoletto. Mr. Grigoletto, he would rip the fattest bong hoots in his car. He was a substitute gym teacher, he did not give a fuck. He was permanently stoned. <laughs> He was fun. He did not give a fuck. We just played dodgeball all day because he was just, all right, kids, I'm high as fuck. Y'all do whatever you want. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, gym teachers. <laughs> what does that mean, Kanzaki? He was so happy. Man, I bet I had a strong. I can't wait for her to throw me around in bed. <laughs> I bet Yamada's strong too. Come on, throw me. Come on, throw me. No, this is not friends. Give me that stink! Oh! Sure. <laughs> Carte. <laughs> sunlight. Sunlight. <laughs> but oh, more, more. Mm, better than you and Kara gets along. Kanzaki is just very developed. Like, at this age, the fact that he has these kind of preferences is actually wild. Like, bro is in middle school and has, like, very, like, mature, developed, like, taste, bro. Like, you would expect this from a dude that's, like, 40-something, like, 30-something. Like, many years have passed and they developed this, like, acquired taste. Bro has it at the age of 14. Loki Kanzaki might be more DJ than Adachi. But look at this comment right here. My voice must be changing. Puberty. I hope he fucking gets a growth spurt overnight. Growing up. Grow up. Let's see it. You know what would be hilarious? If Ichikawa actually gets a growth spurt and gets to Yamada's height, but then Yamada also gets a growth spurt. And then she also grows just as big as Ichikawa grows. So, like, the gap is still there, but at least Ichikawa is bigger, you know? Oh, the light. Badump. Badump. Let's hear it crack. Let's hear it crack. I want to hear it. No, that's that's a long time ago. <gasps> yeah? Yamada's so excited that her fucking Squirtle is like evolving. <laughs> like the Pokemon is fucking evolving. Oh, finally, you little baby ass thing. Come on, become a man. Hey, she'll hear each color. Red bean rice is customarily made to celebrate young girls coming of age. Oh, really? Interesting. <laughs> Yeah, because that's the only arm he fucking had to wank with. <laughs> you think that the size difference between the arm is... I don't know, man. Either one arm just got bigger than the other, the other arm did it. Yo, how big is he gonna get? I'm growing up! Yeah, 
私のこと<笑> She wants that ASMR riz, bro. Come on. Give me that deep radio husky voice. Yamata! Come on, voice crack. Yamata no otona no akashi! Are you implying that she's still growing? There. I mean, I was making jokes about her growing taller, but like, she was already triple D. The fuck? She gonna get triple E next? Hey, it's our schizo friend. Thank you, schizo Kyotaro. That's another episode of Danger in My Heart. And goddamn, bro, so much crying, so much vulnerable moments from Yamada, but. Again, it's not a bad thing. The fact that she feels so comfortable enough to cry in front of him shows how close they're getting. It's just that each guy doesn't realize. He's like, is this what really friends do? Well, he's never had a fucking friend before. I mean, he did, but not to this degree. So he's kind of confused, but obviously he's lying to himself. He fucking knows. We we're so close to meeting dad and mom, and we kindly did, right? I mean, the mom saw Yamada, I mean, sorry, Itsuka through the bed covers, and the mom is actually so cute. I would have never imagined the mom to be like this based on how we saw her at the teacher's, you know, teacher uh, student meeting conference, right? Teacher parent meeting one. She was so strict and kind of harsh on Yamada, and like, stand up straight and stuff like that. I did not expect her to be this moe moe, just did it, did it, man. She absolutely adores her kid. The dad, I think uh, we're getting a bad first impression. Obviously, he looks like a fucking serial killer. My man is a Kyojin, has like blood on stains on his shirt, but just like how, you know, Ichikawa is, and clearly Ichikawa is resembling Yamada's dad, that's why Yamada said, he must be a misunderstood guy. He must be like a really, I don't know, maybe shy guy, but it's like a super big and super big gamer. I want them to get along, but it's like, who knows next time we're actually going to come over. And then the most important thing is this growth spurt. He's grown up. My man is getting puberty under its way. I mean, Yamada is also getting bigger too, but it's just like, how much taller is he gonna get? That's what I'm most excited for, and that's it for me. If you're still here though, and if you enjoyed this reaction, please like the video. Check out the other playlist for more content, and until next time, take care.